Today's drink is the Midori Sour. The Midori Sour hails from the 1970s and is apparently a product of New York City Studio 54 Disco. Uh, most versions disguise the melon flavor of the Midori liqueur by using sour mix or lemon juice and sugar. I like the Midori Sour. It is, uh, you know, quick, easy, and tasty, especially if you use sour mix instead of uh, actually going to the trouble of getting lemon juice and lime juice and sugar. You know, it's uh, served in a Collins glass over ice and garnished with lemon wheel. It's something I like. I like the taste of Midori uh, melon liqueur and I like the Midori Sour. If you are of age and you enjoy sweet drinks, um, I would highly recommend the Midori Sour and as always, drink responsibly. Welcome back to Cocktails and Crankshafts. It's your boy, the Killer Bee, the Africanized Honey Bee, Car Guy Blog 05 on the YouTubes. We are at Exotics Racing today, and we're going to do some hot lapping in a Porsche 991 GT3. With me, as always, is my fabulous co host, the wonderful May Flowers. What up, May? It's your month. What's the deal, son? It's the merry, merry month of May, the month of May. That's some old school Eaton Park stuff. Yeah. Shout out to Western Pennsylvania, Main Valley. I think this is scheduled for like a December release, but whatever, because that schedule is going to change. The Rona has al altered all my release schedules. The Rona has messed up everything. Everything. Oh my God. I saw the, the meme. It said, um, worst purchase of 2019 and it was a 2020 planner yeah because it's a wrap yeah because i was um uh, i was the plan was to be live blogging from actual autocross and track day events and i mm. don't think we're going to have any no, i mean we might I get think... around to it in august or september but yeah it is what it is because yeah, the other thing that's shot. happening is well so here's the thing these schedules are, are planned carefully because there's like four clubs in the state of North Carolina and there are ever shrinking number of available parking lots and runways we can use. Right. So what is happening is clubs, the same clubs like I'm in a, a Raleigh Durham based club and somebody else is in a Greensboro club. Well, we're both using the airport in Danville, Virginia. So we mm. can't be there the same weekend. Right. So you're, you're picking and choosing these dates and as the dates are falling off the calendar because of the COVID lockdown when we are allowed to actually have events again they got to figure out okay if we can't have more than 10 people gathered in one spot how do we do this if we want to have 50 or 60 or 100 cars drive four laps through a parking lot today how do we do this do we bring them in in shifts what if both clubs want the same place on the same weekend so there's a lot of logistics that are just being completely screwed up just the same way football games and basketball games and all that shit is too oh, but yeah. i think anything gonna... we ever um i think everything we used to do in terms of big groups and large gatherings is going to be modified um at least for the at least next two or three years until we can get some solid meds some solid i mean treatments. i figure eventually there'll be a vaccine and it'll be what it is but yeah. um for the time being we're fucked so that's just, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to get off that and get on to this. Uh, so I'm in a, I'm in Las Vegas on the occasion of, mm, this wasn't an occasion. I was on spring break from uh, my MBA program. So I didn't have school that week. And a single friend of mine was begging me to go back to Vegas so he could come because he didn't want to go by himself. I'm like, go by yourself. It's not a big deal. But he didn't. He didn't want to do it. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll go with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I Vegas like Vegas. Is always a good time. I was like, I got. I like Vegas. I'm on spring break, and I got. I got cars that need driving. So even though I only drove one car that trip because I was budget constrained, because he wanted to stay in a resort and not a cheap ass bottom basement hotel like I'm prone to do when I'm by myself. <laughs> well, I no. He, he's always a Vegas the person. Bougie no. Friend. He's a Vegas person, so he's got like, you know, the player's card and the points and, you know, he wanted to stay on a Caesars property so he could get his points and use his points. And I get that, but I'm prone to stay in an off strip chain hotel and just because uh, I got that's where I, that's where I got my points, you know, so it's a it's a trade off. He was trying to upgrade you. Uh. 
you know, and that, <laughs> the, the place we stayed is not, a, I mean, the Rio is not a particularly, I mean, hell, Caesars just sold it. Or it's Cause the Rio is one of the legacy. Sell with a two year lease back or something. Something. Rio is a legacy spot. I mean, it's not ancient, but it's, it's, it's in need of a refresh. You know, it's it's at that twenty year window or whatever, thirty year. I don't I don't know how old it is, but it's time. It's time for you can tell by the furnishings. They're just they're not the ones that aren't outdated are just beat up, and you know the car it needs new carpet and new windows and it's just you know. Anyway, we went out to uh, Exotics Las Vegas, and I got in this Porsche GT3 because hey, why not? So. Here we go. We're gonna start this from me pulling out onto the the tarmac to wait, and away we go. Woohoo! Okay, you are not hearing the audio from the video. That is correct. Alrighty, as long as I got it right this time. And that plane out there in the background is a fighter jet from nearby Nellis Air Force Base. Oh, I don't think I noticed that the last time we watched this video. Oh, we never watched this video before. We didn't? We before. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I was there, the Thunderbirds were practicing. I don't know. Because yeah, that's where their home is. Uh, in a normal year, they're not there all that much, but that is where their home is. All right, the Ferrari goes out, and he's going to tell me to pull up. And away we go. And we're off. And so this is a circle-ish track. Oh, wait, look, I didn't realize I could follow you on the video. Yes, it is a We're road course, because the other version was cropped where you couldn't see the track layout. Um, uh, it is a uh, road course, technically, uh, in that I turn left and right. This is the front straight brake really hard make a right turn here this is the only banked turn yes brake hard another right turn now I like this guy because he's being very calm and methodical and that's that's more my style you know some of the instructors are a little bit frenetic But this is also my third time on their track in a car, so I'm a little more, uh, a little more comfortable with what I'm doing, and I feel better about the layout. And also, the Porsche is a driver's car. The Porsche likes to go fast, and it feels good going fast. Because they're good Porsche. Yes, which is funny because not as much horsepower as the Ferrari or the GTR that I had previously driven, but it just feels better. Yes, and I, I imagine some of that is their personality and some of it depends on the skill of the person handling the car. Um, but I, I don't do well with the more excitable types because I I don't handle that kind of energy well. I'm very zen when I'm trying to drive. And all, all that yelling and shit just gets, it, it just makes me slow. It gets in the way. All that hype just stresses me out. Like, calm the F down. You let me, you know, again, unless we're about to go off the cliff, just Well, no, but, it, you know, what's funny with me is, like, I'm like that about um, physical sports, you know, stick and ball sports and, and things like that. Like, Baseball, basketball, football. I'm a yeller and screamer in those situations. But inside the car, I like to be focused and very quiet and uh, internalized, I guess you could put it. I mean, even when I'm driving by myself, you saw, you've seen the videos where I'm lapping by myself in the Nissan. You notice I don't talk a lot. Vegas has the strangest, you know, Vegas is like a 
bowl surrounded by mountains. It's the strangest geography out there. It is. It's, it's, um, I don't know how I could describe it. I am both impressed and terrified by Las Vegas. Like what we've managed to build there in that desert is awesome. But when you see the amount of water that's been drained out of Lake Mead, you're like, right. uh, when you think about what that valley looked like before they built Hoover Dam, you're like, uh. or the fact that they're, they're trying to grow crops in California based on water that isn't in Lake Mead anymore. Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, and it's like, whose idea was this? Who maybe we shouldn't here? have settled the West. Right. Who came out here and was like, you know what would be dope? A city. I mean, like, that, whose idea was that? And, and why? Because I can't. Uh, my I'm understanding is that, that it was, was a. Uh, yeah. It was literally like a stagecoach town at one point, which grew into a railroad stop, which grew into a, you know. The way I understand it, it was literally a way station for GIs headed to the West Coast. So my it guess in those like days, it, it was a train stop, probably. Um, you know, in the days before airplanes. Plus, remember, in, in, in back in the day, I don't think there were too many airplanes that could make the, the flight from the East Coast all the way to L.A. Right. In the piston engine days. They had to stop for fuel, so. And I, to be honest, I've never really looked at the full history of Las Vegas. I just know it's not, it's not a very old place. No, not you know, it's like people forget the baseball teams only moved out to the West Coast after the war. Everybody always forgets that the Dodgers were in Brooklyn, the Giants were in New York. You know, that, that stuff all happened after World War II. Before that, the West Coast was you know, pretty much what it is now. A couple of big cities with a lot of nothing in between. Pretty much. No, not like bumper cars. <laughs> no, not like bumper cars. Bumper cars. The without object bumping. is not smashing the other thing. <laughs> without the bumping and the other car. I would say the the way I picture it, it's like when I was a kid and I would watch races on ESPN. And you get the in-car camera, you get like the, the, uh, they would do a lap usually with a retired race car driver in the car or they would ride along with one of the special, with one of the current guys in the race. And one of the commentators would talk you through each turn. You know, the peculiarities of the braking or where it's bumpy or where the passing zones are and all that in the lead up to the race. And that's kind of what I, what I envision when I do this, it's like, I'm that race car driver that's on a reconnaissance lap. Or I'm doing a qualifying lap. The bird's eye view from the video game. No, because I'm not good at video games. I crash a lot. Oh, See, really? that's the I, thing. I crash oh, video I games. I've never crashed a real car on a track. I, I've left a racetrack once, and that was only two tires. But I have never. Oh no, I lied. Okay, there was the there was the rain incident at Road America, but everybody goes off the track at Road America in the rain. That's nothing new. I'm certainly not the first person to ever do that. Oh, I'm sure. All right, and we're done. Finito. Went out. Headed back, and this, of course, was when they were still. They weren't quite done with the place. Was it as it still being built or being remodeled? It was being remodeled. Um, the first time I went in September 14, we were in a tent. We were in like a, was, I mean, it was a rigid structure, but it was clearly a temporary structure. But now they got the new canopies and the new building all done. Um, but as you can see, there's still a little bit of finished construction that needs to be done. It looks much better now. It's very, it's very nice. You'll see in the, the next video we do. I had a ton of fun. No, sir.
And that is that. So what'd you think? I liked it. That looks very cool. Like, like it's a good time. It was super duper cool. Thank you for watching Cocktails and Crankshafts. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell icon, and we'll see you soon with new content.